Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a full step-by-step -step guide, just showing you how to replace a fuel injector on this 2015 Volvo V40, and it's the 1.6 diesel. I'll just show you. We've got the top-down diagnostic machine on it, still using this Phoenix Light 2. Um, we've done a full code scan, um, but at the minute it's actually clear. Basically, we have got an intermittent intermittent issue with this one. We can clear the code out, and it does actually sometimes stay out for a few days. Now these. This engine is really common to the injectors and a lot of the time when they do go down it does just permanently fail and it'd be running completely off a cylinder. Uh, but the main issue that we're having, I'll just show you quickly the fault code that we did have as well, which is P1264, cylinder 4, high to low, side short. Um, but say we've cleared it out and it's actually, I cleared it last night and it's actually stayed out for 24 hours, but it's only done about 15 miles. Um, but the issue that it's having when driving, if you're sort of demanding fuel, if you're just putting your foot down to overtake, it's um, just cutting it out, knocking it down into a limp mode, then you can just stop it, restart it, and it's clearing it. Uh, but it is just pinging the engine light on when it does it. I'll just show you. Um, we'll just, I'll run through it in a minute. But this engine, obviously, it's in some of the Fords, Peugeots, and Citroëns as well. Now, the injector order can be different. On the Peugeots and Citroëns, it often starts number one at the gearbox end, and number four is at the cam belt end. On these Volvos, it starts number one at the cam belt end, and number four at the gearbox end, and the forwards can be different again as well. Um, but I'll just show you a quick test that I always like to do quickly before, just, just to confirm that it's definitely the right cylinder that we're replacing. Um, but before we get into that, I'll just show you some of the parts. We've got a new injector. If you check out links in the description below, I'll put links to an injector where you can get them from. I'll put links to all the tools that we're using, and I'll list all the torque settings in the description as well. Um, this is a kit that I always use when replacing injectors. Basically, just got this little tool, which is really handy for pulling the injector seals out. It just sort of, you can just thread it into the copper washer, and it's a little slide hammer. And then it's got some cleaning bits in there to clean the injector seat out as well. <laughs> but once we get round to replacing it, run you through everything on there. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Um, but we'll get straight into the video. I'm just going to pop the engine cover off. It just simply pops on. We'll get that out of the way. And there's a tiny little foam cover that just sits over the injectors. I'll just pull that out as well. And I'll just show you how we're going to confirm that it's the right cylinder. So we've got the fault is relating to cylinder four. So we're just going to uh, run through that now. Right, so we've got the engine cover off and just simply pulled this foam cover just out of the way. I just unclipped these fuel pipes just to move them out of the way, just so I can get that bit of foam out of the way a bit easier as well. But we can just see, number one is tucked right underneath that corner there, two, three and four. So what I believe is number four should be this this one here on the gearbox end on this one. I'll just show you all I'm going to do just to confirm it, is just simply disconnect it. Just simply push the tab in there and flick it off. I'm just going to strike the car up, just leave it running for about 10 seconds, that's all. And it should then log a, log, log a fault code with that cylinder. So we'll just do that quick now. You shouldn't really need to run it too long at all before that registers. Now that we've done that, if we just refresh the scan. So we're going to do a full code scan with this top down machine. It has got a few other fault codes in some of the other ECUs. It's got some issues to do with the, the lights in there, but we'll just speed through this scan just so we can show you the fault that it's logged. Obviously, I'm expecting the fault code to be different to what the issue that's coming up with. It's coming up with a cylinder four high to low side short. Obviously, I've disconnected it, so we'll get an open circuit fault now, which will actually be a different fault code, but at least it'll confirm that it's cylinder four. You can just see the fault that we've got now, P0204, cylinder four, open circuit. So we know that's definitely the right cylinder we're looking to replace. So all I'll do is just turn the ignition off for now. Not too worried about clearing the fault code because I'll do that once we're finished. And then I will just run you through. There is a little procedure that you've got to run through. They don't have a specific coding on these Volvos. Um, in some of the Peugeots and Citroëns, 
and the Fords as well. Quite often these injectors actually need carried in, they need the number on the injector inputting into the ECU. Uh, but I don't believe it does on this one. I'll run through it after, but I think there's just a little procedure that we've got to run through, that's all. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is just give yourself a little bit of room. So I'm just going to tuck that foam out of the way, tuck this fuel pipe out of the way a little bit. But So these th these this end three injectors aren't too bad to access. Um, but what we're going to need to do, obviously the connector's off already, so I'm just going to pull that out, tuck that out of the way. Now the return pipes on these, to get these off, you basically need to cup your fingers under each side, under both green tabs, and press down in the middle as you sort of pull up. And that'll, uh, that'll pop the return hose off. So just do that now, just try to get it on the cam. No more. Luckily, okay, again, the end one, because it's the end one, you can just pull it off and push it out of the way. If it's one of the middle ones, you might need to undo a few just to get it out of the way there. So, um, but now that we've done that, we're just going to, you've got 14 mil on the high pressure hose, we're going to undo that completely. And then where it goes down the back, we're just going to slacken it off. I'm hoping if we're slackening the other end off, we can move it out the way enough because the other end's a little bit tricky to reach. But I'll just try to show you. Just look down the back. You can just see down the bottom there. It's a little bit awkward for access. Might use like a crow's foot spanner. Just see if we can get in there. And I'm hoping if we just crack it off, it allows us just enough movement to just push it out of the way a bit, that's all. And once we've done that, we'll just get this foam piece out of the way. It just sits in, but it's actually covering over the uh, injector clamp bolt. So I'll just, but just for now, we'll get this 14 mil off and then we'll run you through that after. Right, so I've undone the 40 mil. I've actually only undone it at this end for now. I'm just going to see, because it's only just located into there, we might actually get away with just undoing it at this end and not having to slacken it off at the other end at all. So it will just make life a little bit easier. Uh, but this foam trim, you just sort of, sort of pull it back. It's quite a big piece that's located underneath all the pipes. So it'll be a bit tricky to pull it all out. So what I'm going to do is if you just pull it back, we should be able to access the e -talks clamp bolt there which is a size e12 that you want for that i'm just going to undo that and you should be able to just get in there and wiggle the clamp and bolt out and pull it out but we'll get the bolt out we'll probably pull the clamp out with the injector so just for now we're going to uh, undo that and get that out of the way Yeah, so that's the injector out. As you see, it didn't come out too bad. You just had to sort of try and work it. Obviously, you can't really get anything decent to pull on this end. So you just had to just sort of try and just work it a little bit. They're not really known for being too seized in these injectors, luckily. So some injectors can be a right nightmare to get out. Uh, but it looks like it's not going to be too bad to clean up. Uh, but that's the old one. So we'll just put that aside for now. And it's actually come out with a copper seal on it as well, which is a bonus again. So if it didn't come out, the copper seal stayed in the bottom there. And I just want to use that tool just to um, to get that out. I'll just show you quickly that and how it works. Basically all it does, you just simply slide, you just twist it in and then just use the slide hammer function and you can just pull it out. But if you didn't have that, another way, another way that you can do it, which does work quite well, just a Phillips screwdriver, we just tap it in, if the, um, it just seems to grab the copper and you'll normally just get about okay with a Phillips screwdriver if you really need to. Um, if you just have a look down the bore, you can see it looks really clean that. It doesn't look too bad at all, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a wipe out in the hole. But you can see the actual seat for the seal is really nice and clean, so I'm just going to give it a sim just simply give it a bit of a wipe round with a, with a rag in there, that's all.
Yeah, so I did just give the bar a little bit of a clean out with this tool and only really need to just put it in, just work it really lightly, just cleans up the very bottom seat, that's all. And um, once I've done that, just give it a little a quick wipe round with the rag. And um, at this stage now, ready to fit the new injector. Obviously it comes with a couple of protective caps on it, just one over the threads there for the uh, high pressure joint and then one on the tip of the injector itself. So just gonna take them off. Now on the new one, the seal's quite nicely sort of bedded on there. If the seal was a little bit loose, sometimes I'd drop the seal in first, just make sure it lands nice and flat so that you can just drop the injector in and through the seal, that's all. Uh, once I've got it in, I'll just wind the threads for the high pressure hose on by hand. I'll not fully nip it, um, and then I'll, I'll feed the clamp through, put the bolt in, then run you through talking it up, and then once that's talked up, I'll just give the uh, high pressure hose the final nip that's all um, so we'll just get that back into place now Uh, so at the minute, I've just really gently wound the e-torx bolt down just by hand. I've just got the thread started by hand on the high pressure hose. I'm just going to run these up lightly with a spanner. I'm not going to give it its final nip. And then we'll just torque that down. So as soon as I've just given that a light nip, I'll just run you through the torque setting for the main injector clamp. It's a little bit fiddly. You just want to be careful as well. When you're running the uh, e-torx bolt in, you just want to be really careful. You can't really afford to damage the threads in the head. Um, because of this piece of sponge, it does sort of go in at a bit of a slight angle from the back. Just want to be caught out, don't get caught out sort of winding it in from the front, that's all. But you feel if the threads start binding, you're best off just doing it really lightly by hand, that's all. Right, now the official torque setting is four, it's, it's done in two stages. You want four newton meters and then 65 degrees. Now I haven't actually got a torque wrench that goes as low as four. And the lowest on this one, we've got a digital one here, is 6.8. So I'm just going to do it, but it should, I haven't tried it as low as that, but it should show me the torque on there as we're doing it. So I'm going to just try and get that a bit less and then we'll go for the 65 degrees. If it doesn't show me less than that, I'll probably just go slightly less than 65 degrees, that's all. Um, but if you haven't got a digital torque wrench, or you've just got a normal one, you can obviously do that, and then you'll just need an angle gauge to set the angle, that's all. Now, it is always best to do them with a torque wrench, um, but if you haven't got one, um, you won't be careful. You don't be over-tightening it. But again, it doesn't want to be too slack, so but we'll just torque it up, and then we'll run you on to the next stage after that. Uh, so I could actually see it on the gauge when I was doing it. I just got it just past four, so I'm just going to set it now to the 65. Right, so now I've got that torqued up correctly. Next thing I want to do is just give that a, just a nip. Again, with these, uh, they don't want to be too tight. It is a bit of a nip, that's all. But definitely don't want to make sure you don't do it too tight and damage the threads. And once we've done that, we're just going to push the um, return hose on. And once you've pushed it in, into place, and then push the green clip down to secure it. And we'll just put everything back together. I might just leave this um, foam cover just out of the way a little bit. It's just when I've done anything like this, I always just like to run it up, just have a quick check on it afterwards, just make sure that you can't see it leaking or anything like that. And then once we've done that, we'll run you through the um, procedure on the diagnostic machine as well.
Once you've got the retainers on, you always just want to make sure, and you've pushed them clips down, just sort of cup underneath it, and you'll just feel that it's locked into place, that's all. Now what I'm going to do at this stage is just strike it up quick now, just have a quick look round. I'm just going to, um, before I do strike it up, I will clear the fault codes as well. I'll just strike it up, and before anything, I'm just going to have a quick look, just make sure it's sealed up. Just had it running for a few minutes just give it a few revs and um, just let it settle down it's obviously just with having the fuel pipes off just gets a bit of air in the system so I just need to clear that through and it might just be a little bit lumpy a little bit of diesel knocking just to like until it uh, clears some of that air that's all um, I'm just going to turn it off just for the video um, but just obviously you'll not be able to hear it but all I do at this stage now once you've done it just leave it running and just have a really good look round just make sure because there is quite a bit of pressure at the return areas here, so if it is leaking, you'll see it quite clearly. So just, just leave it running for a few minutes while you keep an eye on it. Check your connection at the high-pressure hose and at the return pipe there. And just make sure it's definitely not leaking. Once you're happy with that, you can put it, put it back together. I'll just skip through this step, and then I'll just run you through um, the, the procedure on the diagnostic machine. Right, so we just had it running for a few minutes there. Well, let's put it back together, just keeping an eye on it. Uh, everything was um, spot on. There's no leaks at all or anything like that. So I've just turned it off now. I'm just going to run you through where the um, procedures are on this top-down scanner. Obviously, if you're using a different scanner, um, it might be set up and in different places, but I'll run you through it on this machine. Now, it's not like um, on the Fords and the Citroens where you have to actually put the injector codes in it. Um, there's a procedure to run through. I'll just show you where it's located and how you would do it. I'll not be able to run through it at all um because it just involves uh, doing a certain bit taking it for a run and then just finishing it off but it's quite straightforward if you've got the scanner you just basically need to follow the instructions now it will only have this option on a quite decent scanner on a decent scan tool some of the basic readers obviously won't have this function on there but on this one if you go into special functions and you can just say once we get this new menu up on the special special functions we've got a couple of different ones we've got checking and resetting the adaption for the injectors and we've also got resetting the adaptions for the fuel system high pressure side. Now it's not like on the Citroens and Peugeots where you need to code the individual injectors and put the actual figures in off the injectors. Um, it's quite a simple procedure. You'll have to have quite a decent diagnostic machine to do it. Obviously I just thought I'd put this on here to show you that this top down machine has got the capability of doing it. Um, but it basically needs to run through and it's like a learning procedure. Uh, I'm not going to fully run through it because it's just it's just simply following some instructions. You just keep skipping the steps but there is a point where it wants you to run it as well and then um, just finish off the procedure after you give it a certain amount of um, driving time um, so I just thought I'd show you all I'm going to do is skip to the step where I've just I've run through them just show you there's definitely fixed the fault and once I've given it a run I'm going to just um, give it a decent hard drive as well just make sure it doesn't ping any faults up just to confirm that it's definitely an injector that's all um, but if you do want to check out um, the tool that's used is Top Down Scanner. I've put links to this in the in the description as well. All them tools are in there and the torque settings are all listed as well. Um, don't forget to check out any of the other videos. I'm just going to run through this quick now, give it a road test, and then we'll just skip the video to once we've uh, once we've got back from road test. Right, so we've just got back from running through the adaptions. So I definitely couldn't have recorded it well running you through it. It's just you had to do it. The first set of adaptions was done quite easily. Basically, you just had to run through it. Um, just turn the ignition off and just leave the key out for three minutes but the actual um, running through the adaptions for the injectors it's really clear and simple to run through but it does basically take between sort of 10 and 20 minutes on a road test to do it and this is the main screen I'll just put a quick clip now of what it was doing as I was driving down the road and I'll just come back to the video I'll just put that in quick now So you could just see on the video there basically exactly the same screen as this um, but it just shows you a percentage of the progress as you're running up to it i think what i was putting the video on there it was on about 50 percent ish um, but it goes up and it took me about sort of i'd say it nearly took a full 20 minutes um to get it to get to the 100 percent complete um bit on it so but obviously i couldn't record that while we was driving um, but you could also sort of tell as well while i was running through 
uh, the adaption. To start with, it was a little bit diesel knocky. Once it had completed the adaption, it started to sound really clean and no sort of knock at all to the um, from the injectors. So, uh, but now that we've run through that, it's all fully adapted. Um, can just just shut it off and just make sure that there's no fault codes in it. Um, but so I'm happy that everything's absolutely spot on now. But it just shows the capabilities of this top down machine again. Um, if you're interested in it, definitely check it out. It's it's well worth its money. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.